Tally ho, everybody, this is A Heap of Games, Adam speaking, and I'm here to do an album review, which is something I've never done on this channel before, but I've had, I've wanted to do this video for months. And so I finally said, well, why not? Why the bollock not? So, my favourite album, in several forms, is just behind me. And I'm going to give it the A Heap of Games review. Now, the album in question is this one here. Static Prevails by Jimmy Eat World. Now you might say, Adam, that's a bit of a strange one. Why have you picked that one? Well, it is a bit of a strange one in that it's not the usual genre I would usually go for. It's mid-90s, would you call it emo punk? Something along those lines. It's not quite pop punk. And it was sort of early emo not the rubbish emo you got in the 2000s, mid-2000s, but the, the the old type that isn't actually so bad. And it's not a genre I'll usually go into. I'm usually more into, well, bands like Marillion, um, Trail of Dead, uh, Sigur Ross, that sort of thing. But this album is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I must have got it in 2004 which is when I first got into Jimmy Eat World. I bought Bleed American first, and then I got this one second. I didn't like it at first. It took me several months. I listened to it, and it all just seemed to be a bit of a mess, a bit of a blur. The album just sort of started and finished. I was like, what just happened? And then something clicked. It was Digits and Caveman, which are two of these songs on the album. They clicked, and the rest of it just followed. And it must have been my favourite album now for 11 years. This one here. Jimmy Eat World, Static Prevails. I also have it on vinyl. So this is the uh, purple lavender coloured vinyl. So you can just see it there. And then... This one is still sealed because it's the opaque white disc version, which apparently only a thousand copies were made. But apparently there's still a few available. So the one thing I will do before I go into the deep part of the review is give it my rating. 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, 20 out of 20, maybe not 100 out of 100. But along those lines, this is a stunning album. Easily the best that Jimmy Eat World have done, and my, my personal favourite of all time. It's probably maybe not with other people, but I would thoroughly recommend going out and buying this album because it is something absolutely special if you dedicate time to it. It took me a few months, but once it clicked, it really clicks. Now, before and after Static Prevails. Before Static Prevails, Jimmy Eat World released this album, which is Jimmy Eat World, self-titled. Pop Punk. Uh, nothing terribly original on it. Very heavy, very raw. There's not much variation to the songs, but there are a couple of standouts, such as Usury and Reads and 346. And then after Static Prevails came Clarity, which regarded by probably most fans as the best one. Unless they're really sort of new Jimmy Eat Worlds, in which case they're all into Bleed American and Futures and all that rubbish. So these are the two albums. Now these two are quite different. You could say that songs like Blister from this one could fit on this one if the production was lessened. But they're quite different. Static Prevails falls very neatly between these two. Where's my disc? I can't be bothered. It combines the pop punk of this one and the softer parts of this one and melds it together into something almost perfect the softness of clarity the pop punk of the self-titled album it flawlessly provides an evolutionary step between those two styles and that was Jimmy Rod's peak songs like Robot Factory, sound like it could be from the first self-titled album, as well as Digits. 
And then you get other songs such as Claire or Anderson Mesa, which could find their way onto Clarity. So it is that perfect middle point between those two albums. And it does fall right in the middle of probably Jimmy Eat World's peak, which I would say is 95 to 1997 or 8, probably 7. So there's that just two years which this album falls directly into. It was released in two, uh, 1996. But 95 through to 1997, probably the best. If you, like, if you like this, or if you're just taking this on recommendation basis, you'll find the Jimmy Eat World Singles album, which te- contains a lot of songs from that time period. Uh, that one's an absolute blast as well. And even some of the Static Prevails... Um, Unused tracks such as School, Seasonal, Better Than O are also absolutely brilliant. They did a couple of splits at the time. Uh, that's just a call it in the air rock star uh, jukebox disc. Uh, they did split albums like this one, which was with Blueprint, in which they had the songs Christmas Card and Untitled. Again, it's basically the same time period and fantastic songs, even if they're not really put on that put on an album right hold on a minute this album showcases the best bits of jimmy Eat world maybe not the best vocals because the vocals are a lot more raw you'll notice that if you listen to jim adkins on this album and then jim adkins on clarity onwards he becomes a lot more clean on this he's very gritty in his singing very very screamy almost but it's also shared vocals with Tom Linton, who, this is another point where it's the perfect midpoint between Clarity and the self-titled, because on self-titled, Tom Linton sings all but one, and on Clarity, Jim Adkins sings all but one. On this one, vocals are shared, I think, seven songs to Jim Adkins, five to Tom Linton. And it really works for it. The shared vocals, it adds more diversity to the songs and they combine their vocals as well there's a lot of multi-layering on the vocals several times in the album such as uh, uh, thinking that's all claire call it in the air 17 world is static they all have these multi-layered vocal sections and they have it on some of the be- the the unused tracks as well and they are fantastic it is i don't know why they stopped doing so much like that because it, they really did it well. It's a lot more aggressive than the tracks, the, the albums that followed, but it's also softer than a lot of the times on the albums that followed. There are sections such as the last section of Digits, which is extremely soft, quiet, as well as parts on in this in the same room, bits of Caveman, the an episode four in itself as the whole song is a very soft song one of the softest softest they've done but then they've also got songs like the other half of digits robot factory which are really in your face and not a single song sums up this dynamicism in this album better than in the same room which was often maligned i used to be on the jimmy world forum back in the day when that was still operational and i think it was voted one of the worst songs they did which is utter bollocks Auto bollocks. It's it. It's the best example of how dynamic the band can be in the space of four minutes. The soft parts, the loud parts, they, they bang right into each other, and yet it's not jarring at all. And in fact, the the whole eighteen twenty minutes between digits through to in the same room is very much like that. Very bang quiet, bang quiet, but it's never jarring, and it is, in my opinion my personal opinion, the greatest 20 minutes of music I've ever heard. Digits, Caveman, World is Static in the same room. Utterly breathtaking. Best tracks and worst tracks, best tracks, probably those four I just mentioned. That whole 20 minute section of Digits through to in the same room. Worst tracks, there aren't really any tough tracks. I'd say the one I'd listen to least would probably be Claire. I have to be in the mood for Anderson Mesa at times. It's not quite as... I won't go to every time. But it's still a great song. The one song that tends to stick out a bit like a sore thumb is Robot Factory. If it were up to me, I would have In the Same Room 
move through to Anderson Mesa, sort of conjoin through to Anderson Mesa, much like Digits did to Cave with Caveman. There's a little section that joins the songs. Something like that would be perfect, but Robot Factory just seems to go bang straight in there. It's probably one of the only jarring moments of the album when it goes bang into Robot Factory. But in itself, it's a good song. It's a really good song. It's a Tom Linton song. song. And I think Jimmy World actually played it a couple of times over the last ten years. I mean, I'm going to go over this bit now just before I go into the rock opera, rock opera section of this this um, review because that's one of the big points I want to do. Jimmy World have almost disowned this album. They've they seem to have completely disowned this one. I'm getting all mixed up here. This one, that I don't think they've played any of these songs since probably 94, 95. There's no video footage of them playing any of these songs off the Jimmy Eat World self-titled album. And they never reissued this album. Apparently there's only a thousand copies made. By the way, apparently, if anyone knows, apparently there's black discs out there. And I've got a, one of the silver ones that's got a little rocket on it, look. But apparently there's black ones out there, and I want that confirmed to me, please. But... Jimmy Eat World did a Clarity Tour, they did a Bleed American Tour, I'm not sure if they did a Futures Tour, but they never did a Static Prevails Tour, and this is the 20th anniversary of Static Prevails, maybe not the exact day, I think it was released in July, but this is the 20, it's been 20 years since this thing, this thing came out, and they don't seem to play any of the songs very much anymore, I mean I've never even heard Caveman being played live, I've never seen... I've never been there when any of these songs have been played live. Then again, I've only seen them once on the Chase, List, Chase This Light tour. And quite frankly, they've just released a new album, Integrity Blues. I haven't bought any of the albums since Invented. Because, I know this is going on off a tangent now, but this is just before I get into rock opera, I'm just going to discuss current Jimmy Eat World. I, list, I kept buying them up till Invented. I was really into them. Especially for the first two years when I got into them, when Futures came out. Chase This Light came out, and it was a big disappointment. It's not a very good album, in my opinion. I thought it was too poppy. Invented came out, and I thought, actually, yeah, I quite like this. It's better than Chase This Light by a mile. But I didn't get damaged, because I heard the main single, which was I Will Steal You Back, and I thought, I've heard this before. I heard another couple of songs off the album recently, but nothing made me want to buy it. It all just sounded so familiar. And the new songs I've heard off the new album, Integrity Blues, it hasn't changed my mind. I think I've heard what Jimmy Eat World has to offer, and they will never, ever do anything as good as this again. Period. I don't think any band will produce an album that I prefer to this. And Jimmy, well, basically, they aren't this band anymore. It's a different style to what they do now. They seem to have disowned this style of music and the songs on this album. But if anyone knows Jimmy, well, please tell them to come play this album in full for me. I will pay them good money. Uh, 50p if I've got it anywhere. I'm quite poor. Do it for charity. Right, so let's get on to the rock opera phase of this review. This is the part where, if you've seen the title of the video I mentioned rock opera is it a rock opera now a rock opera is think Green Day's American Idiot where there's a there's an underlying story a narrative to the piece of work I have a plot with a start middle finish and I believe that it might be possible that something like that was done with Static Prevails. I could be talking absolute bollocks, but it struck me one day as I was listening to the songs, I thought, there's almost a running... Th there are several little running themes going throughout the songs, and I'd listened to it again and had the idea of, is there a plot going on? And I've got a selection of the lyrics here throughout the songs, and I think... Maybe I'm just imagining things, but... I've now got this story in my head, the Static Prevail story. 
and it really enhances my listening experience of the album. It might do for you as well. Of course, you might think I'm talking rubbish, but here goes my, my Static Prevails rock opera theory. So, we start off with the song Thinking That's All. This is where we introduce ourselves to the first character, which is a bloke who travels from place to pl place, gambling, drinking, uh, generally being a rowdy sort with his mates. Lines such as, first cello suite, I know I'm late, what do, I, what do you care, stop dragging feet, we can't go back for seconds lost. Smooth the sheets, no one was here and never will, wind your watch for seconds gone. Drive by, don't stop, hate wins, don't stop. Now I get from those lyrics a guy who moves from place to place, just try, there are some people that he pisses off and just <laughs> runs the other direction. and Especially the line, drive by, don't stop. So this is a guy who, he doesn't settle anywhere. You know, a bit of a gambler, a bit of a drinker. We've probably all seen that sort before. You know, it's almost like a guy from a motorbike gang, mo motorcycle clan. <laughs> but it may, may seem tentative now. But I've got to, you've got to take into context the story that I take from the other songs here. So keep that in mind. Um, drive by, don't stop. Smooth the sheets, no one was here and never will. That's someone who's moving from place to place. Uh, I know I'm late, what do you care, stop dragging feet. That sort of thing. So the next song is Rockstar. Now I've picked out lyrics such as Rockstar, what's mine is yours, Rockstar, you're looking good, you're looking to find a fight. Find a fight could refer to this rowdy guy. And I see this song as the next personality in this story. Being the girl called Claire, who we get introduced to a bit more in the next song. And what's interesting is that the vocals change as well. So if we, if we go through this album, Jim Adkins sings the, the lines for the the... the the guy, and Tom Linton provides the the, the thoughts of the uh, the girl Claire and her family and her friends. So keep that in mind as we go through. So Rockstar, what's mine is yours. You're looking good. You're looking to find a fight. I'm the stranger here. You know, can't you understand that things always work out my way today? So there, these two are meeting, and she likes him, and she wants him. Get off my battlefield. Could not take it back from you. She's seeing him and she, she's basically falling in love and she knows she can't push him out of her head. So, story so far, got this guy who likes to go from place to place and we've got this character who likes this guy and wants to keep hold of him. You're still tentative, I know, I know. Remain with me. And then we move on to the song Claire. Learn your restricted ropes. That's an important line. Paint across on your left hand. One good thing signed away and with it your only hope. This is where I see the guy trying to entice Claire into his way of life. Learn your restricted ropes. The restricted ropes that keep you tied at home. Whereas he can go from place to place and do whatever he wants. Go do whatever. One good thing signed away and with it your only hope. Which could refer to the freedom the freedom from those restrictive ropes attention focused on today so quiet slipped behind my back unsettled severing always severing old ties one last goodbye may last the rest of your life so those are important lines severing old ties one last goodbye one last goodbye may last the rest of your life so that's him saying sever the old ties and come with me say bye to them you might not come back so this is the song where he's basically trying to convince Claire, convince Claire, the one who's fallen in love with him. Yeah, okay, if you like me, you have to come with me. One-way trip can work both ways, and loose ends kept untied make better friends. The things you buy may someday leave you. Again, that refers to the idea of looking on what she's got now, where she's restricted. She's in this place, her home, this house where she she can't escape. Loose ends kept untied make better friends. That's referred to himself. He's just a man of loose ends. 
and he thinks he makes better friends. So that is Claire, where these two are discussing. He's trying to convince her to come with her. And then Call It In The Air adds to that. So the f- first lines, leave home today, escape your, re- escape your region, it's in your head, keep moving on. Now already, I'm thinking this is where she's starting to fall into his his way of thinking. Leave home today, escape your region. Choose starlight, no way to retrace. Now that could come, become important later on, assuming I'm thinking ahead well enough. <laughs> Can't depend on honest answers from dependent hands. Dependent hands being people who depend on you, which implies that they're always around you. Won't accept an honest answer from an open hand. So the the thoughts are going through her head. Should I, should I not? Say the words and I sign off. Starlight, star bright. Follow the stars, basically. She sees him as, well, a rock star. That's what we established... uh, That's why it's called Rockstar, I think. She sees him as this Rockstar-like figure. Star, Rockstar, Starlight, Star Bright. So that's almost how she refers to him. It could be his name, the Rockstar. Again, tentative, and you could dismiss these theories as wacky. All you want, but... I like it. (laughs) So that's Call It In The Air. Claire and Call It The Air, very similar themes of... um, being convinced to leave home and just cut ties. Now we get into 17, where this is another Tom Linton-led one, and this is almost... It almost feels like it's Claire's family talking to her instead of Claire saying something, because you have things like hung up here on a web of comfort, taking off with nowhere to go. That's another important line. Taking off with nowhere to go, which implies... would suggest that she's going to go off this guy who just ca- travels everywhere, so he's basically got he's got nowhere to go, he's got no home. They'll take you, but where you, uh, so you won't come back to me. Tearing down what we built up so well. So this is Claire's family or friends saying, they'll take you off, you won't come back, and you're basically giving up what we've built, what the relationships we have. Hang loose, my friend. Don't walk away from me because I really think you're cool. Is it worth turning back despite these open hands? You're tearing me apart. Now, that could be a line from Claire herself. Is it worth turning back despite these open hands? You're tearing me apart. That could be Claire replying. You'll stop making this decision more difficult for me, you know. And then uh, there's a little line thrown in there as well. You need to find yourself. You need to clear your head and think about what you're doing. Because you're nuts, Claire. So that's 17. And so far, I think you agree with me that taken individually, this it can be a bit vague, but you can see the, the story building here. Or maybe it's just me. And then we get episode four, which is what I call the last part of Act One, because operas tend to have acts. And Static Prevails is two clear bits. You've got uh, thinking that's all through to episode four, and then digits onwards, but we'll get into that in a minute. Episode four is where they head off together, and they're in love. Uh, I can see the lights leading away from here. The light, the starlight, rock stars, starlight, leading away, going away, and she's got to follow. You see? You see? It works. Let's disappear. We'll take a trip of no return to outer space. It's little lines like this that I heard, and I thought, damn it, I think I'm on to something here. Again, it's that idea of let's disappear, we're not coming back, let's just go to outer space, which basically means the unknown. We're just going to go and find ourselves wherever. And, you know, I almost lost my will to live. That could just be her saying, you saved me, you've given me this new lifestyle, and I'm going to go live it. So that is Act 1 of Static Prevails, the rock opera. And I hope you agree with me, because this really does enhance my listening of this. And things get really interesting in Act 2, so let's go on to that. Now, you notice at the start of... um, You notice at the start of Digits, there's that long two, three-minute section of... um, almost droning music going through. Now, that indicates to me, first of all, the 
change of act, so there's a time gap there, just a little instrumental piece. But also gives the idea of a lot of time has, has gone. Because the first act is about them meeting, falling in love, and going off together. Second act is quite the opposite. So let's get into that. Digit starts, pay attention, stop paying for regret. Fossil resources all used up. That could be like his motorbike fossil resources, fossil fuels and stuff, I don't know. Make the best use of your time. Save the long car ride home. Don't leave the house today. Nothing lost, but still nothing gained. No possibilities, all wasted, all gone over. Life means I hear my ears ring one more day. Now, I see this song as almost like an argument between the couple. They've been together for so long now, and then they're starting to get into arguments, they're starting to have disagreements. Hence the words, pay attention, stop paying for regret. It's almost like, stop moaning, stop complaining. And it's Jim Atkins singing, so I'm assuming that it's the bloke singing this to Claire. Like, she's sort of getting a bit weary of all the travelling, and he's saying, stop stop whining. Just like, You know, you've got to get used to this. Save the long car ride home. Don't leave the house today. Nothing lost, but still nothing gained. But she, So she thinks that she's lost something out of this, but he's saying, basically, no. But you haven't gained anything either. Things are basically going to be the same. No possibilities, all wasted, all gone over. You've left that behind. It's gone. You, you've come with me now. You haven't. All that potential you had is gone from there. Sweet muse, she won't be around today. Things that I could not say. Are you through it? Are you gone yet? This adds to my theory that they've just had an argument, and he thinks that she's she can't be around him anymore. She's gone off, and he thinks that maybe she wants to go back home. Hence the other lines that I mentioned previously. Don't leave the house today. Save a long car ride home. So basically, we've come through a time period where now she's regretting the decision to leave. And she she's almost... He thinks that she's contemplating going back home. Then we move on to the next phase of... Phase? Because phase, phase in, phase out. Of the song. You're on and off. Phase in, phase out. So she's indecisive. She she wanted this, and now she doesn't. Maybe she's flip flopping. Crush a heart, crush burn and fall under cushions. Hide the change, so no one knows. Now this line always confused me. Whether because I originally thought maybe he was buying prostitutes or having sex with other women. Under cushions, hide the change, so no one knows. Just be careful who you tell. That's a bit of a strange one. It could be it could be that. Maybe that's why she wants to leave. She's noticed just spare change under under cushions. Uh, that's why it's a bit confusing to me, but um just be careful who you tell. She, he's warning her don't tell someone about the money under the cushions. <laughs> it could be metaphorical. I really want to care when you say I'll change that. I just don't feel a thing when you say we'll get there someday. And now this refers to the whole idea of static prevails, which we get a bit more into. Um, the idea that things don't change even though people say they change. I really want to care when you say I'll change that. But he doesn't feel it when he says we'll, we'll, we will change that. So what I get from this is basically this is a guy that sleeps around with loads of people. And she fell in love with him, hoping that she could change him from that. She could almost domesticate him. But he doesn't think it's possible. He tries to lie about it. He tries to pretend. But he doesn't. He's he's a rogue. He, he's a drinker. He's a gambler. He's a roisterer, a doisterer. And that's just not who he is. And maybe this is another reason why we're getting this argument. She, she wants to leave home because she th she thinks, maybe I can't change this guy. Maybe I can't love this man. And he's he makes promises but can't keep them. So that's what I get from this song. It's probably the most, one of the more complicated songs on the album. There's, there's a lot there that I had to think about and really put into place. But I think it does fit in the end. Now we move on to Caveman. Now I remember when I was on the forums a few years ago, no one really knew what this song was about. It was always a bit of a mystery, this one. I never got a clear explanation. But with my rock opera theory, I think we're on to something. 
A monster lives in your backyard. This is Tom Linton's voice again, so we're speaking from the perspective of Claire. A monster lives in your backyard. The two by fours are making their way around. And I'm right, if I'm right in thinking that two by fours are planks that you make fences with, so the monster is in your backyard, building a fence. Now this is probably metaphorical for him. He, th this is they they have a house a metaphorical house together where they they are together and now he's trying to fence her in he doesn't want her to leave and he won't let her leave the big get bitter the big get bigger when the fight's done he gets more and more determined over time every time she brings up the, the, from the previous song digit where she's on and off she keeps flittering changing her mind Every time she does that, he gets more and more determined to stop her from having those thoughts. The big get bigger when the fight's done, so it's just gradually just getting more and more edgy, more and more paranoid. I found that secret door. A man with a shovel's gonna shovel's gonna dig deep down to find out where it feeds. It's either feeds or leads. I don't know where I got these lyrics from, but they don't come. This album doesn't come with a lyric booklet, so some of the lyrics here might be a bit off. I don't think it's gonna change much. A house. So the caveman at this point is basically about this metaphorical house that they built together, which he's building a fence around, so she can't escape that lifestyle. He's trying to stop her from escaping that lifestyle. I found that secret door. Could she? She's found a way to get around him, and a way to get out. Now the line: "A man with a shovel's going to dig deep down to find out where it leads." Now, that's a tricky one. Think answers on a postcard for that one, because that that's one of the lines that throws me. It's, it seems like a drag to be torn apart by unexpected hands. We've got this theme of hands again. Uh, if we go back to... Yeah, call it here and 17. Can't depend on honest answers from dependent hands. Won't accept an honest answer from an open hand. Is it worth turning back despite open hands? And then we come to caveman... Seems like a drug to be torn apart by your unexpected hands. So we've oh, got a theme of hands, apparently. But she didn't expect, when she left with him, that he would be the one to tear her apart. We talked earlier about... She thought the family in, se in the song 17 was tearing her apart by trying to stop her from making this decision. And now she finds out that he's the one that's been tearing her apart, metaphorically, obviously. He's not actually tearing her apart but she's realized now that he was the one that has torn away her hopes and dreams it's in your name it's in your face i'm wrong again so every time she sees him i wish my thing would stop going off every time she sees him thinks of him she's reminded of this she's reminded of how this guy this man who's now building this metaphorical fence around me took my hopes and dreams and i'm trying to find a way back to it so that's caveman and i think I think I have sussed it, except for that one line through my head in. But you can see where this is going now. That Act 2 is where the tension is and the eventual end, which is quite a depressing end. Let's, let's not beat around the bush. The next song is World is Static. Now, this is probably my favourite song on the album, especially the um, Between the Money sections. The longest time away, I think last time the friends we made, longest time away, Best friend is too cheap to stay. Obviously, longest time away. So they've been away a long time now. Um, been away from her home, and everything's changing. This is because we've got Jim Atkins singing again. It's him talking to her at this point. Um, so she, he's basically saying to her, "You've been away for so long now. You you can't really go back to that lifestyle. You're in this lifestyle now." Between the money and your every move acceptance. Now, money could refer to the... I've just realised, under cushions hide the change. Now, I referred to it as money early, but now I've got a new thought that change could be the change of one's person, because we get that theme a lot as well. So maybe disregard what I said earlier about the change under the cushions. It might be. It might be, because change, it's got a dual meaning, isn't it? So um, Think about your own theories in the comments below. Between the money and your every move acceptance. Maybe that's referring to that money as the cushions, assuming it was that type of change. Acceptance. So, 
if we carry on with these lyrics, uh, we both know things never change. We both know static prevails. We were talking about change earlier that he didn't think he could change. Just don't feel a thing when I say we'll get there someday. So he's he's basically saying to her now, I can't change. I'm not going to change. This is who I am. Take a seat at your request. Five years, I'm still there. The longest time away, my friend. So that's probably referring to maybe they've been away with each other for five years by this point. But he's still the way he always was. He hasn't changed a bit. Shut up. Thingamajigger. He hasn't changed who he is. And this is what this song is about. He's basically saying to her, get over it. I'm not going to change for you. Because that's what she's been trying to do all this time. So now we move on to In the Same Room, where things really start to burn out for these characters now. And this is sung from the perspective of the bloke again. So, risk worth taking, risk worth leaving. Seems I'm still afraid to promise. There was a risk to take her with him. It was also a risk for her to go with him. It's a mutual risk there. Still afraid to promise. He can't, again, he can't promise that he can change. He can't make promises for her. Too big to stop, too big to hold on to. Now, this could refer to the line in Caveman, the big get bigger when the fight's done, and now he's too big to stop and too big to hold on to. He's now so paranoid and so edgy that she just can't be around him anymore. Too big to hold on to. Trade up for the fast ride, trade your friends. And what, how, more, how, how much more plain can you put it? Trade up for the fast ride. The fast ride can go in that way. Trade your friends. She had friends there. Gone now. Traded for that, the, going on the road. <laughs> the fast ride. Train passes us. Don't move. Be still. Be silent. Now, those are interesting lines because I still think he's addressing her. And I think she's at the point now where she's trying to leave, but he's trying to stop her. Train passes us. Gone. Don't move, be still, be silent. Don't say anything. I don't want you gone. You're staying here. Don't tell anyone to, I don't know, take you. No pictures left here. No pictures left to burn goodbye to. The smell of ash and white walls blank. He's saying to her, you haven't got anyone left back at home anymore. They've probably all forgotten you by now. They've probably all moved on. There's no point in going back. So that is in the same room. We have a general theme of him trying to tell her, don't go, just stay here, don't... Don't do anything. You're staying here. You're staying in this fence that I've built. And now moving on to... Ro We're now moving on to Robot Factory, uh, which comes to close to the end of the album now. This one threw me off for a little bit, because this is the one which was a bit jarring, both in terms of its place on the album and how it just bang into it from in the same room. But also the lyrics, it didn't lend itself to the little story that I'm, I'm getting from this album. But I'm starting to see where it's coming from. It's from Tom Linton, it's Tom Linton singing it, so we're getting it from the perspective of Claire again. And what I've narrowed it down to in my head is the idea that she's going back home. And the strange thing about this and the final track, Anderson Mesa, you'd think that Claire's character would be sad, going be the sadder of the two um, more reflective more emotional and the rock star character would be the angry one because she's left but in these last two tracks it seems to have been swapped Claire's angry We've got uh, lines like falling off this cycle looking over shoulders I'm why you bring me here tear these clothes down when we fight back around these tiles like something you don't want to see like yesterday when you were found she's heading home and I originally didn't understand, didn't understand the use of the name Robot Factory. But then you have lines like, um, Our fortunes have been retrieved by humans who knew me. They used me to get what's mine. They'll never replace me. I'll be back. I want revenge. So maybe she's coming back to her hometown and, hometown and she sees that almost like she's been replaced. Her role in the society has been replaced by these robots or clones or whatever who who've taken her role and she's having to fight back to win her place back in the society which she left um so it does seem a bit tentative but those lines in there uh, falling off this cycle which could refer to maybe a motorcycle because 
I've already thought of this Rockstar bloke because that type of guy would be in a bike gang. So falling off this cycle could mean the cycle of just going around all these different places. It could also be a, a throwaway mention to falling off a cycle or leaving that 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 lifestyle. Looking over shoulders, obviously looking back to where she came from um, originally, and then looking back on the lifestyle she's leaving. I'll be back. I want revenge. So she's she's gone back with anger, and that's the last we see of Claire. She's not going back and being all. I'm sorry I left you, that sort of thing. She's going back and she's angry. Maybe because they let her go, they didn't convince her enough. Maybe, as mentioned, felt replaced. Felt like she's just been forgotten. Maybe that's why she 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 wants revenge. So that's how we leave Claire. She's bitter, she's angry, and she's trying to fit back into the society where she came from. And then, final track of the album, Anderson Mesa, which is as close to clarity... As the as this album comes, I believe maybe not on Jim's vocals, but if Jim on this song sang a bit cleaner, then it would sound like something off of Clarity. But now we're back to the rock star, and there's obvious reference to him speaking as if to Claire. Don't leave without intentions of ever coming back. So obviously, she's left, she's gone, and now he's sad about it. He's not angry; he's sad. Maybe he's come to some realisations, he's reflecting. So don't leave without intentions of ever coming back. Vacation, you take them if you wanted, you'd ask them. Alone, I'm outside. He wants her to come back. She thinks that, He thinks that maybe she'll come back eventually. Almost like she's gone on holiday. <laughs> Vacation. Again, reference and don't leave without intentions of ever coming back. So he's stuck in this house he's created with the fence. Hence the line, run around or jump the fence. So that's maybe looking back at how he he saw her trapped in this area and considering jumping the fence that he's created, the fence that was created back in Caveman. See how it all links together? Maybe a bit tentative at times, but I think it's, it's solid enough, a theory that I've got with this album that it makes a clear story and that's how we leave it he's sad referencing fences and that is the rock opera Static Prevails by Jimmy Eat World and what a masterpiece it is there's so much I could really go on for ages about this and this video is probably long enough as it is I do apologise for that but I wanted to get my point across the musicianship in this album is brilliant absolutely their best the, probably the best example of that is Zach Lind the drummer Never has he been this energetic and creative as he has as he was in Static Prevails. If you fast forward to post Clarity albums, Bleed American onwards, the drum beats become very robotic. Um, but that's because of the style of music they're doing now. They're doing pop music, which isn't really my thing. And you can't have Static Prevails type drums on a pop song. You've got to have very basic boom boom chip boom 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 chip. Whereas on Static Prevails, it's very, very creative, and I love that. So this is Zach Lynn's best album. The guitar interplay, because there's a lot of that going on, is fantastic. Really nice-sounding guitars. Vocal interplay, there's lots of cross-vocals, as mentioned, and that's brilliant. All-round, fantastic album. So, the rock opera, in my opinion. Static Prevails. Go get this. It's a fantastic album, really recommend it. The best Jimmy Eat World album by a clear mile. Don't listen to what the people who um, prefer the new Jimmy World stuff say, because they're wrong. They're clearly wrong. I know best. But if you do like a bit of pop punk, like sort of 90s emo before it came, 20, uh, 2000s emo. Theory me, that was a bad turn, wasn't it, when that happened? If you like that sort of music, this is an album you want to get. And then if you like this, obviously the singles, and then Clarity has a very... It maintains a lot of the Static Prevails vibe, but takes out a bit of the aggression, so it's a bit softer than Static Prevails. So there's a lot of songs on Clarity that could fit onto Static Prevails and vice versa. So this has been the review of Jimmy Eatwell's Static Prevails. And I don't know how I ended up in a changed set of clothes, but... I'll leave that to you to decide. This has been A Heap of Games, I'm speaking, do my first and, I don't know, maybe my last album review. I needed to do it.
Tara, Toodle Pip, Doodaloo, and Cheerio. Go get it. Goodbye.